morning, uh, MTO and MTO family and uh, everybody watching today. Uh, hope everybody's been having a, uh, a great week uh, thus far. I'm going to share my screen here for us. And uh, we're going to continue today with our, our talk and study that we've been doing this week in Second Corinthians. And you know, it's been a little while since I've been with everybody. So uh, I hope everybody's had a great start to 2021. Uh, and so today uh, we're going to go forward, like I said, in Second Corinthians and look at a couple of verses um, out of chapter six. And so we're going ahead and, and get right started in it. And, and we're going to look at Second Corinthians chapter six and verse 14. And that verse says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness. So, you know, maybe I kind of figured uh, since Valentine's Day is on the way or kind of as my oldest son Connor refers to it as Singles Awareness Day, uh, I thought maybe I would do a, a couple's devotional with everybody. Nah, I, I'm just kidding with you all. But uh, I will say this, over the years, Jody Collins and myself have, have used this scripture on more than a few occasions uh, with the with the youth to kind of help them with the idea of maybe choosing wisely in who they dated or who they were close friends with. Uh, you know, this scripture really carries some weight and influence with the ability to impact not only our personal lives, but the work that we do in, in the ministry as well. And so, you know, we really have to ask ourselves, you know, who's leading who? Because, you know, here lies the danger. Uh, we must always be aware of this. We have to be alert to our choices and sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, making an effort to guide us away from the danger of being led astray. So I, I want to talk here a little bit. And, you know, what we're talking about in this verse, you know, Paul is giving a direct command in this verse. Believers in Christ must not be yoked with unbelievers. And I think, you know, to give us the example or image of what this would look like, you know, I found this picture of a yoke or a harness and, you know, when you see this, we see the yoke that's used for a pair of oxen. I mean, you know, this is a, a rigid harness. Uh, you know, it, it locks livestock together so that they would pull in a, in a consistent or go in the same direction. You know, with this yoke that you see, you know, they are truly connected. Where one goes, the other has to follow. You know, and I'm, and I'm trying to give you just that idea of it. You know, you see the two oxen here. You know, and the understanding with that yoke is that they, the two have to work together and they have to want to work together. You know, that, and we apply that in our life, the application, you know, that should be in our marriages, you know, as parents, supporting our pastor, the, the leadership in our church, you know, doing a work uh, or even a ministry in the church. You know, we have to be going in the same direction and not pulling in the opposite direction. You know, that's the importance of being equally yoked and like minded. You know, and I think if really for us, I mean, if we really wanted to see a living example of being unequally yoked and the effects, I mean, that we don't have to look any further really than the political state of our country this, this past year. You know, there's two sides that also should be working for the same goal and going in the same direction. But sadly, when we look at the dysfunction that's been on display from two sides, supposedly working together, but pulling in opposite directions. And we really see what can happen. You know, and again, another example of this in the Old Testament, you know, a form of this word, the yoke was used to forbid even mating cattle of a different species. That's in Leviticus chapter 19. And then also the law in Deuteronomy chapter 22, it also forbid even harnessing together an oxen and a donkey to plow a field. So see, so we see the importance of, of the being equally yoked and not unequally yoked, the, the, the repercussions, the problems, the things that could happen. You know, I was reading over this and I looked in my, my Dake study Bible and it actually uh, expanded upon this. And it says that it actually gives reference to a military term with the meaning of keeping in your own ranks. Now, again, for my military folks out there, you know how important it is to stay in your rank, to not pull rank is that expression because all that does is leads to a bad outcome. And so the Dake even goes on even further and it, it, it emphasizes this and it says, do not leave Christians and join with unbelievers. 
You know, Paul is telling us again in this verse that those that are in Christ are something other than those who are not in Christ. They're not the same spiritually speaking. And, and that honestly, he was saying they should not be locked together in a binding relationship. You know, he goes on in, in this verse and he asks two very serious questions in the vein of, of, you know, basically saying what cooperation can there be between virtue and wickedness? You know, and the answer we see in this is clear. Righteousness cannot mix with lawlessness. Light can't have any communion with darkness. It, it can't happen. Why? Now, we, we know that light and darkness cannot join in fellowship. And, and we see this in this illustration I gave here. Of, again, I, I love a lighthouse at night. But as soon as light shows up, darkness must vanish. And that's the whole point of a lighthouse. It keeps those ships coming in where to go and, and safe, safe travels through the night. So, I mean, again, I think you see this. When light shows up, darkness m must vanish. So, so what we're dealing with is those that are in Christ, those Christians have become the righteousness of God. While those outside of Christ continue in a state of an unrepentant sinner. And there's really no other way to say that these two examples are on opposite ends of the spectrum. And again, that's that's spiritually speaking. You know, and what I want to say here, I want to say this, I want to emphasize this. It's essential. I mean, it's it's really critical that we all understand that Paul in this verse here, in no way is he saying that believers or Christians shouldn't should never associate with unbelievers at all he, that's not what he's saying you know we should continue to live and function in the world you know we, we are in the world but we are not of the world and you know but sometimes being in the world is going to include crossing paths and that's going to be encountering unbelievers and and having you know different kind of encounters with them you know this is not saying you know that, that christians are above or better than anyone you know we're not i mean uh we're all sinners We've all fallen short, but this issue, and it's not about race, it's not about gender, it's not about status, it's not saying any of that. It's a spiritual issue, as, as well as the impact of what being unequally yoked can have in our lives, along with the results that it would yield for our life. Our approach to this should really be the same as Jesus. He came that all would be saved, that all should come to repentance, you know, he never viewed himself as better than others, but on the contrary, he showed love, he showed compassion and honesty to all those that he encountered and crossed paths with. And by doing that, he also evoked change in people. He impacted those around him and, you know, and he never compromised, never. I'll give you this illustration about being equally or unequally yoked. I want you to imagine yourself in this room, standing in this chair, Standing up in it, not sitting in it, but actually standing up in it. Now, what if a person of the same or similar build, you know, height and weight to you entered the room and you're standing in this chair? I want to ask you this question. Would it be easier for you to take their hand and pull them up to where you are at? Or would it be easier for them to pull you down to where they are? And that's something to think about with, with who we associate with, who we have in our life and whether or not we're equally and unequally yoked. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. It's much easier for us to be pulled down out of that chair than for us to think that we can pull someone up to us. We can't always kid ourselves and think that we're strong enough. I guess in a, in a moment of seriousness, gravity will win every time. You know, if we're not careful, we could get pulled down. You know, and this is why Paul is warning us for to be careful of who we're yoked with, who we're joined to, who we're connecting with. So we have to make sure that that when we have the moments with unbelievers, that we are the ones having more impact and more influence in their lives than what they're having on ours. You know, we have to remember, just like pastor's devotion on Sunday from chapter five, we are a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new for us. So we have to keep that in mind when we decide about who we are joining ourselves to in the form of people. The, in the form of the places that we go, the platforms that are in our life, the media, social media, entertainment media, all those things and what we allow into our lives, into our homes, into our minds, into our hearts to have influence over us and not only us, but our children. 
Paul gives us a charge here, and it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, further down in this same chapter. And it says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You know, we see, like I said, later in this chapter, Paul's giving this charge, calling us to come out from the world around us. In this verse, he is telling the, the Corinthians to separate themselves from any connection to idol worship. You know, for us today, you know, that that's the encouragement that all we need for us to come out to separate ourselves from anything that would come, you know, before or take the rightful place of having God first in our lives. You know, we have to, you know, anything. I mean, I, we're not saying that people are going to bow down to a, 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 an idol or a, a, a statue or anything like that. But we have to be careful because if anything comes before the rightful place of God in our life, no matter what it looks like, a person, a place, a hobby, an interest, anything, that, that falls prey to being idol worship in our life. If it comes before God in our life, the rightful place and his rightful place is first. You know, looking right here, you know, I'll say this, you know, we've been called to be a light in this world, uh, a city on a hill, a, a beacon of hope to those around us, you know, that light. You know, this starts by being equally yoked, by striving to come out from amongst the world, to set ourselves separate, and then again, to include part of pa Pastor's message last Sunday, to take that stand, to speak out for the Lord and against the things that the enemy is going to bring against us. You know, when we do that, we, you know, we can look at the promise we have in his word. You know, the ending part of that chapter in, in chapter six, it says, I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters. We'll be king's kids. I mean, imagine that. You know, the blessings that we'll have from God if we, again, will look to him for our direction, for our guidance, if we'll choose wisely about what we're adjoined to. And, and we will come out from the things and the temptations of this world. And I think moving forward, as, as usual, <coughs> in closing, I always have a couple of songs for you guys just to give you some encouragement. The two that I have today, uh, you know, that maybe can make us inspire us to make a stand that, that we need to no matter what's coming our way. The first one is a, a song called Jericho by Andrew Rip. And I really think, you know, for those moments when you're having that fear to take a stand or you don't really see a way out for things in your life, this song really is an amazing reminder of what will happen when Christ arrives on the scene for us. And he's always there. The second one, I'm sure you've heard, it's The Father's House. It's by Corey Asbury. I love some of the lyrics in it. You know, if there's anything in your life that you're unequally yoked to, just like the song says, just lay it down. Failure doesn't define us. Our Father does. So today, lay your burdens down. Lay those yokes down today and come to the Father, the one whose yoke is easy, the one whose burden is light. You won't regret it, I promise you. Mount Olive today, I hope you've enjoyed this time together. I know I have. I pray you have a blessed day on this Thursday. I pray that your week's been great. I hope that your weekend and coming up is going to be great. And we hope to see you in the house of God this Sunday. We love you and hope to see you soon. Take care and have a blessed day.